Hi everyone, this is Harisha from HNB Premier Tax and Accounting LLC. Today I want to uh, bring you a quick uh, tax saving um, techniques. So these techniques are like commonly used, you know, among a lot of people uh, that have significant income. But even if you don't have a lot of income, uh, if you carefully uh, understand and analyze and then talk to your accountant or tax preparer, um, tax planner, you could use these techniques to um, save a lot of money in, in, in taxes. Um, the first one is charitable giving. So charitable giving is the one that you know you could donate money and then donate appreciated securities to um, approved you know charitable organizations. So uh, if you donate appreciated securities, then you could deduct the value of the securities at the time of donation, but you don't have to recognize the gain, the sale. Um, for example, let's say you bought some stocks, Apple stocks, you know, when it was like $100, right? So now you're selling it, you know, at the current market value, obviously it's more than $100. So your cost is still $100, but your charitable deduction is going to be much higher and the difference you don't have to recognize that as a gain. So you have to have a, brokerage accounts and then you have to transfer the securities you know itself to um, the charitable organizations most charitable organizations um, they have brokerage accounts so you could you know donate it that way so that's a that's a good way to save you know a lot of money in taxes but still give a lot of money to charity and then you get you know the benefit of both both sides you know um, the second uh, way you could you know um, health savings account you know you put money into a HSA um, and then so your contributions you know are tax deductible uh, and then you could use that money to pay for your um, health care expenses uh, such as deductibles you know uh, for drugs and etc uh, those you know distribution are not taxable the next strategy is to contribute money to an individual retirement accounts commonly referred to as IRAs uh, individual retirement arrangements so you have traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs traditional IRAs are the ones that allows you to take a tax deduction if you contribute to a Roth IRA you will not get a tax deduction for that at the time all right so um, in the future I'm going to do another video about you know explaining the difference between traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs but for um, this discussion just you know if you put money into an IRA during the tax year uh, or from January 1st to April 15th in the following tax year generally you will be able to take the deduction now especially this year you could make the IRA contributions all the way up to July 15th so this is one of the things that I do with most of my clients every time I uh, prepare a tax return so I analyze if they could still put money into an IRA traditional IRA and take a tax deduction so I have um, I have seen you know a lot of clients you know get the benefits you know up to like you know um, 1500 you know uh, close to two thousand dollars you know by putting money away into an IRA so for 2019 the limit size if you're below 50 uh, years of age you could put away maximum uh, six thousand dollars just for you and then also if you have a spouse you could put uh, uh, money uh, contribute money towards your spouse as well so uh, for a couple you could put away twelve thousand dollars so now that's a $12,000 deduction in your taxable income. That's a huge saving. Now, if you're um, if you're above 50 uh, years of age, then you could put up to $7,000, you know, per individual. So if you're a couple, then you could do uh, up to $14,000. Uh, that will bring you, you know, big big tax savings. And then, you know, imagine if you do this for multiple years, then you know those savings are going to add up. Uh, now the next um, tax saving strategy that you could um, adapt or you know follow is invest uh, in municipal bonds. You know um, they are usually uh, called you know triple tax you know free bonds. So for example, if you live in New York and then you know if you uh, invest in you know um, New York State you know municipal bonds. Um, then you know federal taxes, state taxes. You know next tax saving strategy um, is to own a home. So how are you going to save taxes, you know, by owning a home? And uh, there are many ways. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, home ownership, you know, brings a lot of other benefits, you know, other than uh, tax savings. You, you'll have the pride of owning a home and then also your family 
will have like a lot of space to live you know that those are all, all, all the good benefits but apart from that uh, when you own a home most people purchase homes uh, by borrowing money um, through a mortgage so when you get the mortgage for your principal home you have to pay the interest on your mortgage you know every um, every month and then at the end of the year you will get an interest statements from your mortgage company that interest that you pay to your mortgage it's a tax deductible and not only that the property taxes that you pay on your house um, is tax deductible um, so then you know now with those expenses you could lower your taxable income and also uh, one other thing with owning a home usually home values appreciate you know um, most of the years you know in a recession you know uh, in a decline in the real estate market you know some years it, it could go down but generally home values appreciate when the home values appreciate let's say you um, bought a house uh, five years ago and then now you're selling that house at a profit so you bought a house let's say for 300,000 now you're selling it at 500,000 right as long as you live in that house um, for a certain number of years you don't have to pay any taxes on that capital gains um, for an uh, individual um, you could exclude up to 250,000 in taxable gains for a couple married filing jointly couple you could exclude all the way up to 500,000 so that's a huge tax benefit so the next one is um, obviously uh, retirement plans uh, most people know them like uh, if you work in a private company 401ks if you work in a um, government entity uh, 403bs uh, and if you're a self-employed um, you could use SEP a simple IRS etc so um, what these you know accounts help you to do uh, is put money into these accounts and they reduce your taxable income these are tax deferred accounts that means they're not tax free when you put money in um, the, the amount that you put in will not be taxed to you because it goes into the retirement account and then the the money will be invested inside that account meaning if you put money into your 401k so now the money sitting in the 401k and then 401k custodian or whoever manages that 401k could go and invest in stock markets or you know other securities other investments and then when those investments grow you don't pay any taxes so they're they're growing tax deferred now however when you take the money out you'll have to pay taxes for the uh, all the distributions but the idea here is um, most in most people's situations during the working life um, they have higher income and they're subject to higher tax brackets but eventually when they get to retirement their income will be lower and then when they withdraw the money from the 401ks 403bs SEP simple you know um, plans the tax bracket will be lower so that's way like you 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 save the taxes on a lower tax bracket um, and also um, if when you invest you know tax deferred you could invest a lot higher amount like let's say you earn a thousand dollars if you have to pay taxes on it so you will probably be left with six hundred dollars now you have only six hundred dollars left to invest but if you invest you know tax free meaning before you paying taxes you could invest the entire thousand dollars into your retirement account that makes a huge difference difference in the long run now the next point um next way that you could say a lot of taxes uh, is um being self-employed when you're self-employed you know compared to um just working on a job there are a lot of perks and benefits comes with it um now uh, with the uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, especially um, the Trump tax law, they eliminated deduction of job related expenses under Schedule A. Now, if you're self employed, still you could, you know, claim those deductions, you know, under the Schedule C. Now, for example, like uh, if you are a salesperson working for a company and then you drive your personal vehicles to do sales for the company and the company is not reimbursing you separately for that under the former tax laws before 2019 they were deductible under unreimbursed employee 
E expense. After 2019 tax laws, those deductions went away. However, let's say if you're a salesperson, work on under a 1099 arrangement, meaning like you know the company pays you uh, and issues you a 1099, not a W-2, then those mileage you know will be deductible under your Schedule C. Um, the same way like you know your uh, use of home, if you're using an office room in your home to do your to do the work then you know that will be deductible as well so um, there are a lot of benefits comes being self-employed so and this is a good time you know for people to think about you know being self-employed and also a lot of people saw um, during the pandemic uh, self-employed you know um, were considered as business owners and then they got funding from SBA through way of um, economic injury disaster loans and then also through way of you know paycheck protection program uh, loans and then a lot of other other benefits you know um, were given to self employed uh, in, even including you know unemployment so that's that's something else like you know a lot of people co could consider at this point another um, tax uh, saving strategy would be to um, own stocks um, and bonds you know or mutual funds uh, in, in, in the stock market, if you have a brokerage account, you could go buy um, the units or, or, or the shares of stock, you know, companies, so that way those companies will um, grow and then the capital appreciation is not taxed until you sell the securities. But at the time, you know, you sell the tech securities, you have to realize again and pay taxes. Um, but, you know, sometimes if you are in the long run for those investments, you don't have to sell those stocks. Um, the appreciation will be tax, tax deferred. Those are seven tax saving strategies that anybody could follow. Um, there are a lot of nuances to those things. But however, you know, as long as you know that it's out there, you could um, read about them and you know, or talk to your advisors, you know, accountant, ask, um, use them. In the long run, you will save lots of lots of money uh, in taxes. Thanks for watching.